Now it's time for RTB 101. This is the segment where we talk about practical questions to help equip you to share your faith with friends and family more effectively. And I'm here today with a very special guest, geologist and visiting scholar right now, Ken Wolgamuth. Welcome, Ken. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Uh, we're just so glad to have you here and to talk about this very important topic. Can radiometric dating be trusted? And I have to tell you, Ken, I'm, I'm going to have true confession right now. When I first started working here 19 years ago, I did not know much about the science faith conversation. But one thing I thought I knew was that you cannot trust these secular dating methods. So let's talk about it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Why well, should Christians trust radiometric dating? Well, as I was reflecting on coming here and talking to you like this, I'm thinking, well, why do we trust clocks? Okay. So I put it in the same context. It's because thousands and thousands of clocks work and they work very well. It is also true that a variety of clocks don't work for whatever reason. And it may be the battery's dead, it could be the, uh, you know, the spring broke for whatever reason. So some don't work, but the vast majority do work. So that's sort of analogous to what happens in radiometric dating. Okay, that's good. Now, if I were to go on Google and I just type in, can radiometric dating methods be trusted? You know, there's yep. going to be an unnumerable amount of websites that are going to tell me why they cannot Not be, be trusted. trusted. And there seems to be so many examples yeah. where it doesn't seem like the yeah. results are consistent. How do I think about that? Yeah. Well, the challenge, because of the nature of the way the church is divided over this issue, there are lots of websites that say they cannot be trusted. And as a geochemist, geologist and geochemist, that, that's the area that specializes in radiometric dating. Uh, when I look at those, the vast majority of them are examples where it's a gross misapplication of the method. So it's basically false information being presented because they are not presenting the larger truth. They're only picking up the examples where it doesn't work. Got it. So is it a little bit like trying to change the tire on my car with a screwdriver. Like that's not the right tool for the job. Is that part of the problem? Uh, that's a good example. It's, the, it's the, uh, the wrong tool for the job. Okay. And the way my wife often likes to say it, and I think it's a pretty good analogy, when there are young volcanic rocks that have just come out of the ground, come out of the volcano, they cannot be dated correctly, suitably, with potassium argon dating. So my wife puts it in the context. It is like using an oven thermometer to get the temperature of a baby to find out if the baby has a temperature. Wrong tool for the job. Wrong tool for the job. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Now, in the whole conversation about the age of the earth, yeah. there's some people who say the earth is some form of thousands of years old. Yeah. The conventional scientific age is that it's 13.7 billion years old. The Earth is a, roughly a little under 5 billion years old. Yeah. So the question is, is when I hear scientists talk about all of these ages, are they just guessing or do they really know with some degree of certainty how these methods work and that they're reliable ages? Yeah, we do test the evidence very carefully against known volcanic eruptions. One of the very best ones that I have to share is Mount Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, and right about 1,920 years later, geologists and geochemists who were doing what's called the argon-argon method took some of that ash, multiple examples, took it into the laboratory, and they ended up with a argon-argon age of 1,925 years, plus or minus perhaps 90 years, because that's the uncertainty of the measurement. So there is a powerful, powerful example where it works extremely well. The age of the Earth is 4.6 billion years old, and that comes, again, from solid, credible, looking at the evidence. In that case, it comes from, from the uranium element, uranium-238. And I had the privilege of taking my first class in geochemistry from a co-author of the paper where the Earth's age at 4.5 billion years was first published in Science Magazine back in the 1950s. Wow. So yes, it is credible. It is not wild guessing. Okay. <laughs> so we might say that there's 
they have multiple ways of testing these methods. They have yeah. multiple lines of evidence. And when the evidence kind of all goes in the same direction, yeah. this is how we arrive at fairly certain numbers about the age of the Earth. Exactly. Okay. Then supporting it in terms of general examples, I also, preparing to visit with you today, I looked at one case of a igneous rock in western Greenland, and there were five different radioactive atom parent-daughter systems done with radiometric dating, and they all come out, came out from 3.5 to 3.6 billion years old when that igneous rock formed from a lava to a solid. Very good. That's so, excellent support of tying them together. So if we use the right methods and we use them properly, we can get multiple lines of evidence that all go in the same direction. Said just perfectly, Krista. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> very good. And I want to encourage all of you to check out Ken's book uh, on the Grand Canyon yep. that we sell here at the ministry. There's a great chapter in that book of how to determine the age of rocks. This That's very right. Question. It's called, How Old Is This Rock? Very good. <laughs> and so if people want more information about that, we want to encourage them to check out your book on the Ca Grand Canyon and get connected with Ken on his website, Solid Rock Lectures. Very valuable um, work that you are doing there, Ken. We thank you for your service to the church. And I so appreciate the opportunity to partner with Reasons to Believe this week. Very good.